preview there was this troubling story we 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 looked into mm. that we want to uh, spend some more time on this oh one. it's just sad it's you know you know sometimes yeah, when story. you know the way this this thing works is you can look at a big headline oh yeah, I'm saying, yeah. you know economy but yeah. Charlie a, a man has hustled to leave Ghana to Canada father of four and I suspect his family is here yeah it's a man with a wife and four kids yes. and he he went to canada three months ago yeah. so that's probably november mm. and then on the 17th which is just last week yeah. he was going home around 3 5 p.m and he got to a bus stop and then somebody just shot him twice and he dies i mean how do you even you know what what is this you know, what is this it's terrible like, yeah it's and the, the canadian authorities are investigating they don't really know what to say they are i'm so distraught i don't even know the guy yeah it's, it's such a sad story, it you know. Is, no, it yeah. is. It is. I mean, because I know sometimes to travel abroad, yeah, and people can tell us it's a lot. I know some people who have to borrow money to travel. Yeah. I know people who have to go sell family assets yes, and things. because the visa process is tough. Yeah. So and Canada particularly is difficult to get a visa. Canada is very. You know, there was a discussion we had last month about the backlog of visas <laughs> in Canada yeah. because apparently to Canada there was this whole COVID thing and people had gone on strike. And Canada visa, after US visa, people have given up. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. The, so to, the, the Canadian visa, I'm told, is very difficult to get in the first time. Yeah. Which is why there are all these agencies trying to help people to get in. But when you get in, it's easier to just stay in. All right? But the US visa, you can't even get a date. Which brings the whole subject of... People say, if you can raise 50,000 to get a visa, why do you leave? Yeah. I guess you have to ask the people who leave how they do their calculations. But for me... For a man with four kids and a wife yeah. to organize himself and get to Canada and die in this trap. He wasn't yeah, involved in it. At least from the story, it's not like he wanted to do anything for it. He was on his way to home or from work. of a homicide. Somebody just shot him twice. And it wasn't like the, it was a stray bullet. The guy shot him. Just like that. You know, it's, I don't understand. You know, it's, it's really sad. It's, it's. It's, and it brings to mind the question of living in Ghana, living abroad. You know, I was in a PTA meeting mm. yesterday and some of the parents were talking about, and I, my, my kids are in a private school, they were talking about, oh. I thought the G, 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 whatever. G, what the G, yes. G, yes. They, they said that. No, they, so it wasn't a PTA necessarily. It, okay, I don't know. How to, but okay. this is a basic okay, school. Let, let me explain. Uh, it's senior high school. Uh, Number one, it's a oh, private sorry. school. Number two, <laughs> it's a good point. There's, it was a, it was, a, and I think it's something public school should try and do okay so the school my kids go to there's something they call parents conference okay so grade one all parents in grade one will come together meet the teachers in the school administration and then they would what would they do they do a presentation on what they are teaching then they'll do a presentation on last year's marks how many of your children are beyond expectation at their learning level how many of them are meeting how many of them are below so, for example, they can say for maths, there are maybe 60 students in ABC class. 45% of them are beyond expectation. 30% of them are meeting expectation. 12% mm. are below and 2% are way below. Okay. Based on the learning outcome. Mm. Then they would discuss some of the learning challenges and the approaches they are using to help <clears throat> the students that are not doing well. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like, wow. This is not like a big PTA meeting. This is just the class. So yeah. class one teachers and class one parents. And it took us just one hour. So it's not even a luxury. But you see, the issue with public schools is not even the fact that they may not want to do it all. A lot of the parents may not even be able to afford one hour to come and go to for that meeting. So we always say that poverty is not just an issue of lack of money. It's also an issue of lack of options. All right. Almost all the parents in grade one in the school that I went to, they were there and they were asking questions. And the principal was there. There was a consultant there. People were, like some guy was like, why, why don't you let our kids bring money to school? Why are they doing house chores? Like you were saying, yeah. why aren't they sweeping? Okay. Why, why, why are you saying that they shouldn't be lashed? Like that you are giving them, why can't you give them two quick smacks of the cane? Mm. And they were talking about how the rights of children, and how issues like if a teacher over if a teacher goes too much yeah. so that they're concerned of saying that if if you, you say we should lash it's fine maybe the principal can do it but if you say every teacher should do it maybe your child does something the teacher is angry 
and jump and give the person two likes. What if the king hits the teachers? Uh, the this guy. Okay. So even though all the parents were saying they think that the children are becoming that abano, after the school explained, I think we understood it. He said, "Look, with all the conventions, there are ways of punishing, allowing a teacher to cane a child. The risks are too much." Do you get it? You, you can say that the children will become that abuse or whatever, but he's saying that what if a, a, a teacher in anger hits a child or the king hits the child's eye or whatever? So they can do it under certain conditions where the head teacher explains to the child why we are giving you three lashes. But to just let any other ordinary teacher lash, but I'm even digressing. What I'm trying to say is that mm. on the basis of what I experienced in my child's school, the average public school has a larger class size than average private school. So if there's any parent, if there's any child who needs that type of thing, a public school needs it more. But from what I see, the public schools are overwhelmed with numbers. That's number one. Number two, the parents in public schools are mostly working class. Working class parents may not, and I'm not justifying absenteeism. It's most of the people who, who went for the meeting either do their own job or like me, I can ask permission and just go yeah. for one hour and come. Yeah. Now, if somebody works in a factory, or somebody sells oranges, or somebody is a trot or meat. It's not very easy for them to go at two o'clock to their child's school for a one-hour engagement on their child's work. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we need to think about how do we help, and if we want to, to, to meet our targets as a country, it's not only children who go to private schools who are 25 in a class, yeah, you're digressing that. now. No, I'm coming. I'm just doing Canada. No, I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back. <laughs> just help me, Smog. So, no, no, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say that. So, 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 I'm trying to say that. I'm trying to say that. We need to think about living in Ghana. And, and did you know I went to, to went to education? One of the reasons why some families struggle to migrate outside, yeah. education. Because I, when I went to Switzerland, I spoke to some of my friends and they're saying that, Bernard, Switzerland education is good. But you know, expensive it's expensive and there's racism so some of the kids mm. cannot adjust mm. to living in europe mm. because there's teasing mm. and there's all kinds of things so the child is very brilliant but he's always miserable going to school yeah all right now if you can get a good school in ghana yeah. where your child can learn how to speak tree or ever or whatever and they are still well trained to be competitive if you went to the NMT, even go abroad at university, they already grounded as Ghanaians. Yeah. But if you live with your family, maybe you get you get an offer to go to UK. You are a young couple, and you go with your child. It's not easy to 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 transition. Okay, maybe you have a seven year old child, and you want to transition to go and live in America. It's not easy like that. Okay, and particularly if you are not in a very good paying job, because in the UK, for example, you, the school you go to has to be in your borough. So you can't live in Adenta and, and send your school child to a school in Dansoman. It's only in Ghana that we do those things. In the UK, unless it's a boarding school, yeah. which is what is called a private school, public school, if you live in Adenta, you have to go to school in Adenta. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm trying to use this to tease out the challenges of deciding whether to stay in Ghana or leave. The complexities of living in another person's country. The compromises you have to make, sacrifices. I mean, a, a man is standing at a bus stop Charlie. in Canada. And from the story, he hasn't done anything wrong. This is chilling. Somebody just sees him and shoots him. Maybe the person hates black people. Maybe he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Maybe he looks like somebody. And I'm not saying people don't die in Ghana. But it's very traumatic to have a family of four, a wife and kids in Ghana. Your husband is going to the Canada to go and live there. Probably hoping that he will organize himself for you guys to join him there. Just to be short. So all this, this is saying that let's build our country. Me, I'm saying that we will all travel. But Charlie, and people die in Ghana too. Don't get me wrong. People die in Ghana too. But is it worth it? Spend all that money, all that effort, and just die senselessly like this. Imagine what his wife is going through. Imagine what the kids. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah, and I'm sure they only hear it in the news also. Me a couple of shampoo no day too quiet. Because he's been there for three months. Tragic. All right. It's it's so it it all comes back to choices, circumstances. And Sky, I'm not digressing at all. I'm trying to say that nowhere cool. That's what I'm trying to say. No, but you were in the UK. You were, you were in um, Buckinghamshire. I mean, sometimes you have Ghanaians working. It's cold. It's lonely. Nathan, the things people go through in Western countries to send that 500 pounds a month, you have no idea. And you, you sit here as a young guy doing computer class and you are fooling. 
and they are sending you that 500 pounds to pay your fees and you're listening to chase girls you don't know what that man goes through to bring you that 500 <laughs> if, if you knew I'm telling you if you knew what the 500 I'm, I'm serious Sky you see you, you can come to work in this morning it's cold a bit yeah. the hamatan has changed do you know what it means to, to catch a train <laughs> at 5am in, in Europe but to go and know. work in a biscuit factory no, coastal. change work coastal. Yeah. warehouse people are working in um mugs care work is miserable work you're, you're, you're working with like old people in a care house you're cleaning them up and you have to do two jobs sometimes you're sleeping in a one bedroom flat this studio this studio this is like, you can you can be in a room in london which is half the studio yeah. And you're paying crazy money to for just live there. And you don't even you just go and sleep there. You are in some small toilet, go and buy food at Tesco, walk to the bus stop at dawn, do three jobs to just get that pounds and cent for people to buy a land. And even the people who buy the land for you, I don't even buy the proper land. And then some litig. It's crazy, yo, my brother. So this Canada thing, I'm very emotional about yeah. it. That, how can somebody spend all this money to go and be in Canada for yeah. three months and you just die like yeah. this? It's, it's, it's no it's, it's it not is. fair it's not fair at all and i'm happy the friends what they happened the friends in canada started a go yes they started a go fund me for the, the wife i mean oh, imagine four kids as a widow Hi. hey i'm talking you know where i'm coming from it's, it's deadly who. the woman the, the somebody needs to really talk to that woman because she can't even go crazy i'm telling you so the 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 I'm saying many things. Mm. Those who go abroad, and by the way, two hundred nurses left Confuanochi. Yes. For greener pastures, yeah. because we won't fix our country. Two hundred nurses went to went to uh, went to wherever, because we cannot employ our nurses here. Highly specialized nurses. And by the way, once those two hundred nurses leave, There's a about half of their nurses. husbands will follow them. Because usually, once the woman settles there yeah. and so gets her papers, they'll, they'll the man will also go, the kids will go. Integrating, mm -hmm. it's not easy. You see all these players who play Gakpo, Doku, um, uh, Inketia. Mm -hmm. These are all ordinary people whose parents left. And they are not even playing for Ghana, they are playing soccer it's from Nigeria. If you look at the Luton Town team, mostly Nigerians. Now they are yeah. more. When I was in Nigeria, the UK, oh. Yoruba is like the third most spoken language in London after English mm -hmm. and in Hindi. Nigerians everywhere. So in West Africa, there's a good side to it. But you know, it's when you think about it, it's really sad. That like 1884, they came, they shared our countries, they took our people away. Now we are, now, people are running there. They've messed, they've messed up the whole thing. People are going there and still dying. You know, and when this it's, it's like I, I don't know. It's why can't why can't we build? You know, I was talking to some American people last week. They came to, on tour. Rich Americans have come to Ghana, Togo, and Benin on tour. And they said they should get some cock on come and talk down about Ghana. <laughs> you know, so I started saying, hey. So these guys, and they're all wealthy people. They've spent their life well. And they, are, they have enough money. To be traveling They have enough the money to pay to come and go through Ghana. How many, and these are not even extremely wealthy Americans. Who, they didn't look, how many equivalent Ghanaians can also take a trip to wherever they want to go and say they want to take a two-week trip. We don't live. All we do is we work, 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 work. We hustle. Then we go to funerals. We hustle, man. And then we just die. We hustle. Like, why? We hustle. Mm. You know? We so hustle. there's a whole barrier. It, it's a tragic situation. And so I really pray for the woman. Yeah. I feel it's so a, sad. It's a difficult situation. How? Yeah. To just, yeah. and the three months, pay. Yeah. Egg is small. Three months, where you organize yourself. Yeah. Oh. It's a sin thing. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, um, Show me too much. I, I, I feel your pain, and, yeah. and our hearts are heavy this morning. I am particularly distraught because of what I see fellow Ghanaians go through. Yeah. You know, you drive around the embassies, you drive around the consulates, you drive around the missions, mm. and the consular sessions that are springing are private ones that they have outsourced mm -hmm. responsibilities mm. to. Mm. And the things that fellow Ghanaians are going through, just to get that sticker in their passport, oh, visa, saying that, look, now you can travel. And even that is not a guarantee. If you get to the border, hmm. 
the officer there oh. can exercise his discretion one way or the other and say that look my preference step aside you're not coming in airport, yeah and and look during the rain they are there Sorry? the scorching sun they are sitting in it do you know how much it costs to the get a visa? Storms are, are, you know, are taking them. Look, mm. look it, it, a classic example is when you go to the Abilene Pay Traffic Light. I keep talking is about that. Is that what the Canadian thing is? Yes. Mm. As you, 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 when you are passing by this morning, just look to your right. People go there as early as 4 a.m. Mm. They are from all parts of the country. From Bunkurubu, Yunyo, the north of the country, <laughs> Bono, Hafo region, you know, Nkwanta, you know, all these places, they have come. Uh, and the dream hmm. is to leave this country, the heat of this country, By hoping that means. something will change in their lives. And you know, when you are a public official and you drive past these places, look, it's great. People want to leave and go to school in some cases. Yeah. To grow themselves sometimes people have you know perhaps a better office yeah but a good number of the, the time people just people want to just, go out there and hustle just get out of the space people yeah. want to get a travel visa which says that you are visiting yeah. and they overstay their visa yeah. because mm. they know that when they come back charlie that's the end of it mm. so many people are stepping <clears throat> out there not using the right channels hoping mm. that when they go they will make something meaningful in life Mm -hmm. And they can also become something in, 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 in their family. Charlie. Sometimes the family would contribute, like people in the family will contribute money. Yeah. Somebody will bring one Ghana, somebody will bring 10 Ghana CDs, somebody yeah. will bring a thousand Ghana CDs. They put that together and then give it to a contractor mm -hmm. who then goes to Charlie. do their thing and that, then the yeah. people will enter the system yeah. inside. Yeah. There are recruitment agencies outside this country. Some people are charging in excess of six thousand pounds, ten thousand pounds, to get you into that country yeah. to come and serve as a healthcare worker. Yeah, okay. work in the okay. warehouse. Yeah, that's right. okay. oh, yeah. go and walk dogs. Exactly, or perhaps go and be in a cold store. The things that fellow Ghanaians go through just to get some guys. They say, "Me, me, me, me." Me, just they say, "Me, me, cold room." Some guy where they work for media household. Media house where they do big things, you know, they work for code room. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, they cut meat. So, so you it's know, so when you, when you drive past <laughs> some journalists to Bucha, Charlie, <laughs> the black man's bed, a whole journalist so, but, but the point is that, they cut meat, they hold, they hold, they hold, they this thing, clante, they cut meat. They walk, they walk, but money in favor, sports presenting, yeah, yeah, Kumansi, it's a, a broti, I've been a, a, a follow. I was thinking if things <laughs> they cut meat. No, no, if if <laughs> things <laughs> were okay. No, I always you see, there's uh, this thing I always no, say. No, 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 if no, things no. were fine, Charlie. I don't think people would even want yeah, to leave. Yeah, because for a lot of people, a lot of, look, listen, mm. you can go wherever. Yeah. Wherever. Mm. But I but is it, is it, is it anywhere? No, I'm, no, no. <laughs> no, is it anywhere? I'm, I'm just saying that people can go wherever, but you can tell that <laughs> home is always home, and people would always find their way back. Charlie? But people will look at their situations and say that if I sit down and work the numbers, it's better to go. It's, I might, it, it will cost me a lot getting there, but Eventually. I can make all of that back. Maybe not in 20 years, but maybe in five or less. Mm -hmm. And then once you even it out in terms of who you can pay off and everything, then you start. So I just say that it's just, people just make yeah. logical economic yeah. decisions. And even if they've not been done the work you've, you've said, like calculating, sometimes they just want to take a chance. Yeah. Yes. Because you know, some you, you, you can be comfortable, but I can also say, Charlie, let me, let me, let me take a chance and yeah. see. So let and me see. If it works, it works. Yeah. People saying that, look, look, I would have dignity somewhere else, mm. you know, or I would have comfort, peace of mind. You call the police, the police will respond in good time. You call fire service, they will come in in good time. Mm -hmm. Power will not be taking off unreasonably because they say you are do, you do my CAC. I mean, you, you <laughs> hardly see that. You are going home and you know that power will be there <clears throat> because you have paid for it. Mm. You are going home, you know that water will be running. Very there good. has never been any time that I would leave school, go home, turn on the taps, yeah, and the there's no flow. water. You go, you, you, what you, are, yeah, initially when you go, you'll be carrying your, your what's the name? you like the typical gun you assume that, oh, <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> you no, 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 no,
I'm from Adafia. You are carrying my power bank. Because you can't say it's the same thing. Yeah. There's no like. So, so, no like and, and when you see these things, <laughs> look, I, I think seriously, our our political leaders, mm. our sit, we citizens, honestly, all of us, honestly. have to play our part to to to, to improve the conditions mm. in this country. Mm. Because and and whoever is responsible for diplomatic discussions with the embassies here. Mm-hmm. Especially the Abilene pay traffic like situation. <laughs> it should it, not happen. Is it VFS? One of them. The, because the reason is that because the embassy, is, the embassy is not there. Yeah. Sure so it's, it's, I think it's VFS. Somebody must have outsourced it. They are paying money. So what, what was the condition? Brother, actually, people are sitting in the. And I want to drive there. You know, previously, there was a really green grass that somebody, I don't know, maybe some private guy, VFS. actually went to really grow grass, put flowers inside the. the so the, are they sitting under some canopy? Nothing. They are out in the open scatter, you know. Please. So just take it mm-hmm. busy. The, I've done VFS at airport. No, no, you know this. The one. VFS when I was going to, I think Europe. Mm-hmm. So VFS, you go, you, you go and pay. Mm-hmm. You get an appointment, mm-hmm. and then you go. They check your documents, and you enter mm-hmm. uh, the Omni Basic Building on the airport city. Okay, that, that's okay. VFS. Okay. So why is VFS doing for Canada but not giving them a better treatment? Because when I went to the VFS at the airport, mm. we didn't stand outside. Once you go, the security man checks your documents, you sit inside, and then you enter. This one is not like that. The Canada that. one is not like that. The, the one that is in front of Abilene Pay, traf- the traffic light. You know, when you're coming down, is it Dimples they call it? Yes, yeah, so the CP, <laughs> Dimples, <laughs> coming down to Abilene Pay. Yeah, yeah, and if Ogba left there, uh, you are going no, no. to Abilene Pay. So, right, no, left is Ogba, right, you are going right to Abilene Pay. Abilene Pay. There's a warehouse. Salt and Light Ministry stuff. area. Uh-huh, that that area. The Baptist yes. school place, the yes. Baptist yes. office. Exactly. So, it's, it's outside. Yeah, outside. And they stand under the tree. So is there a tree? What are they? There are trees there. You know, mm. previously someone had done some green flower. You mm. know, they have decorated mm. a place. Nice. It was a beautiful you know. place. People were coming mm. to take photographs and all of that. But all of the, a sudden, because of this thing, the green grass is gone. You see brown earth because people mm. are packing in there every single day. And what are they? So are there chairs? Oh, so recently I noticed that they, they, they were bringing... So like I want to understand the problem you are, you are trying to put out. Is it that the people are too many and the place is not big enough? Or do the people have appointments? Why are they there in, that, in those numbers? You see, the, the, the thing is that ideally, the, the system will be seamless, right? If you go to the British people, they are placed at yes. uh, Mervyn Peak. They give you an appointment. You go. You don't go there and you see people crammed. If you don't have an appointment, you have no business yeah. there. You have no business going yeah. there. So it is orderly. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. If you are a premium service uh, seeker, you go there. Charlie, the but teacher. it's the same company. Yes. Well, it's the same company that does for Switzerland. It's the same company that does for... What is happening at the Canadian the, one? Canadian one. I don't know whether it is V. What was that? Is that okay, okay. You, you, I, I was trying to get I don't you. know whether it is V, whatever, whatever. VFS. What I know is that the people there are going to Canada. And sometimes I stop by to talk to them. People have been there since 4 a.m. Serious? Yes. Mm. Sometimes they go and sit on stones, mm-hmm. and, and the numbers Sky, are just. Sky, let's let's hold hold it. I want to bring there. in Nathan. We'll do tech and social media quickly, and then we'll revisit this conversation. Okay? Mm. So tech and social shortly, and that is brought to you us by um, F. BN Bank, FBN Bank says if you are sending money Money. across Africa, it has never been this easier, convenient and exciting. Now through the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System, perhaps you can send and receive money. Material in their production. So these large multinationals can opt to grow maize in Ghana and find a way of blending it with their mixture Mm -hmm. so that they connect the agri value chain to their production. It's a very important thing they mm. did. They did a few years ago and it's still working. Mm. Yeah. There was a company that also tried to use cassava mm. yeah. in their beers. And I think this should be a matter of policy. You know, that's the only way to help. In, because you can do products where you just bring the final product from Nigeria yeah. or from India or wherever. But yeah. if you can find a way of farming, get the right quality maize, brew it here, you are giving farmers a job. Yep. So... I like companies like that. Yeah, but companies like, that, companies that, 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 that deliberately yeah, nah, nah, include nah, agriculture nah. in the value chain. And I want the Ministry of Trade to incentivize such companies. These are the companies that when there's a, a recession, the government can even support to say, ah, 20,000 farmers depend on these guys. Yeah. You know, um, industrialization on its own does not develop if it's not 
value chain emphasized. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So when we say let's do manufacturing, yeah. if you just bring all the leather from Sudan, <laughs> you and not, you just come and assemble it here, it's not the same as growing the hide here. It's yeah. a wrong example yeah. though. So what I'm trying to say is that there are little things we can change which can make a big difference. Okay? So you can report that manufacturing has grown by 6%. That number may not make as much sense. And I'm saying this because yesterday when I, on the point of view, the economist was saying there's a difference between what the government will call an economic success and what a business or a, a citizen will say. So for example, you can say a GDP has grown by 14% in 2011. Yeah. That's a good number for the finance minister at the time. But for the personal... But if the source of the GDP, so if oil, you produce oil, 60,000 barrels a day for a year. Yeah. Your GDP will grow by 14%. That's good money coming in. But there's something called the source of the growth. Okay. If the oil was produced using a labor-intensive method, mm. there's, so you, you understand me, so the, the, the source of the growth is as important as the number. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that the kind of economics we need for Ghana is not just saying that manufacturing has grown by X percent. But if the manufacturing is labor intensive, it translates I, into the that's economy. People so people. our job right. as journalists people. is to say, okay, Amin comes to announce mid-term budget and says between January and September 2024, manufacturing recovered and grew by 60%. That's great. But some of the manufacturing could just be assembling. Now, if there's a value chain approach to manufacturing where your beer has cassava grown by farmers, yeah. your mortar grains has maize grown by farmers in Afran Plains, that then translates into different, it's just what I'm saying. So, that's the next development question Ghana needs yeah. because the, the basic macroeconomics, yeah. they can announce a number and a number is good for an IMF loan, but it, it's not good for anything else. Yeah. But uh, do you know that one of the biggest uh, fruit juice producing companies in Ghana is now importing fruits from Benin, Togo, because real estate oh. developers are, are you know, t- yeah, are they are taking, taking the land, land literally from the farmers. Yeah. So that's the point. So let's go back to anyway. the Canada issue. Uh, yeah, let me read this one before you. This one <laughs> is coming in from uh, someone who is tweeting at us, um, A.B. Fatal, okay. mm-hmm. underscore Fatal. And he says, the beautifully green island Sky is talking about at a Belinque traffic light <laughs> was being catered for by the Lincoln Community School okay. as part of their so- corporate social responsibility. Part of the chaos for the Canadian visa applicants is staying at the visa center till about 8 p.m. each day. Mm. So the, that green median yeah. has now been taking over. So what you see now is green earth. You don't see grass there again. And it's it's, it's heartbreaking. There are so Previous, many comments yeah. on the... I put a few on the platform. Nathan, if you can help us, what's going on in Canada um, uh, Canada applications? Okay. Um, uh, okay, let, let's let's go through this one. Uh, Emmanuel in Tessano. Emmanuel in Tessano. He, wrote, he was responding to the the first comment that got us here mm-hmm. when Bernard was talking mm-hmm. about the um, the gentleman who was shot oh, Charlie. in Canada. Oh, Charlie. Now, Emmanuel in Tessano says, this Canada issue won't stop us from moving abroad. How many times has this happened in a year or a month? Don't we have soldiers and people shooting people here in Ghana? What well, I'm not, have you done about it? Me, I'm just sad about the guy. I'm not, I, I hope he didn't. I'm not saying pushing go to Canada. Yes, yes. I was just saying that it was such a pity that the guy died. Yes. Maybe the way I said it suggested yeah. that like you shouldn't leave. But no, okay. please go to Canada. Basically, no where yes. cool. That's where you want to go. Right. All right. <laughs> now, <laughs> talking about the, the visa application center mm-hmm. at Belinte, this one says, I'm in traffic listening to you discussing the Canada visa application center at Belinte. The problem is twofold. Mm-hmm. One, too many people and applicants showing up hours before their scheduled time. Okay. I was there last month for an 8 a.m. appointment. Mm-hmm. I showed up at 7.50, mm-hmm. but I was not allowed to enter until about 8.15. Why? At a, Okay, about 80 other applicants had 8 a.m. appointments. I met someone outside who had an 11 a.m. appointment, but showed up at 6 a.m. Ah. They need a bigger space, and they also need to efficiently process people. Mm-hmm. Their processes can be improved. Okay, that's a good insight. Now, this one says, with the Canada Visa Application Center at Billing Pay Junction, mm-hmm. applicants usually come there with their respective agents ah. to help them. Unlike other visa centers that allow only the applicant, this congests the ah. place. Oh, okay. can, can you repeat that? Can you repeat now, that? he says, applicants usually come there <clears throat> with their respective agents okay. to help them. 
unlike other visa centers that allow only the applicant. Mm. Okay, and it says this congests the whole place. And, and it the, says agents the agents are, are known as the go boys. You understand. All right, more messages. <laughs> this one says, in the case of the man who was shot in Canada, will the Canadian government help the family? Can we organize something or can we organize a, a fundraising campaign? There is. For, well, there, there is a good There's a good fund. The story mentions that there is a good funding yes, account. So but probably should probably be the full story mm -hmm. for people to get there because we are assuming they say they had the full story. Okay. Just give right. some highlights and go back to the messages. No problem. So so the story says a 39 year old husband and father of four, mm -hmm. Edu Boache, has tragically lost his life in Toronto, Canada Charlie. during what the police say was a random gunfire. Mm -hmm. by an unknown man last Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now, the horrifying incident is said to have happened at a bus stop where the deceased was waiting to board a bus. Mm. Boache, who reportedly arrived in that country three months ago oh. for greener pastures oh. and was already going out to send some money to his family back home in Ghana, was one of two victims in the shooting in North York area of Northwest Toronto. Mm -hmm. Now, Toronto police reports indicate that the father and husband died at the hospital while receiving treatments after sustaining gunshot oh. wounds. Oh. An online fundraising platform, GoFundMe, has since been activated to solicit mm. for financial support for Boache's family mm. back home in Ghana. Okay. And um, <clears throat> the authorities in Canada say they are on the manhunt for uh, the culprit. A police statement on Tuesday, reads in part, quote, on Saturday, February 17, at approximately 3.05 p.m., police responded to a call for sh call for shooting in the Jane Street and Driftwood Avenue area. Mm -hmm. A detective, Philip Campbell, said Edu Boache and another unnamed 16-year-old boy oh. who was on his way to play volleyball oh. were shot indiscriminately less yes, than sir. 24 hours apart yes, while waiting for a bus in the area of Jane Street and Driftwood yes, Avenue on Friday and Saturday. So the, the boy too was shot in the same area? was shot in the same area. So 24, so within a time period of 24 hours. And you know the funny thing, probably because he's been there for only three months, he probably doesn't know you know, sometimes people with local knowledge may know that that place may be a dangerous place. You may not even have known yeah. at the time. Who knows? Because yeah. if you're in a country in three months, you know, it takes a while takes to, a while, yeah. to get, yeah. get yeah. used you to the system. Yeah. It can take a while, yes. a long so time to understand the system. All things have been there at that time. I don't yeah. know. But 3 p.m. Yeah, 3 or 5 Is Canada known for crime? No. Oh, now, that is why, that's why this is very oh, jarring because it's a very out of the ordinary Don't experience. forget that one of the reasons why the visa applications are many mm. is that Canada has begun a skills. So when I'm on YouTube, Usually, I'll get a, a notification. An ad. Do you want to live in Canada? Mm. You don't even need a degree. Mm. There's a lot of Canadian recruitment of, of certain. Huh? Mm. So, the Canadians themselves are looking for people, which mm. is why I'm surprised VFS is not managing this thing better. If the Canadians themselves want people to come, you get me? Yeah. Can't you? Can't you? Look, UK arguably has more applications yeah, than any country, yeah. but the bridges are very efficient. They're when you go efficient. to Mervyn Peak, you don't see these kind of queues. There's another VFS center that does South Africa, Switzerland. They are also quite efficient. So maybe the, the Canadian authorities at the embassy need to speak to VFS because mm -hmm. it's very demeaning. Mm -hmm. And I think the Minister of Foreign Affairs should send a letter to the Canadian embassy mm -hmm. that you cannot allow VFS to treat... I mean, even the outside sitting is a problem. Yeah. Do you get me? It's yeah. not It's not fair at all. It's, it's, it's demeaning. It's disgraceful. If the numbers are too many, decentralize. Yeah. Break the... VF, VFS is a private company. They should not be treating Ghanaians like this. And a billion quid traffic light. It's not even safe. Yeah, it's not. Imagine. Traffic light. So you think if I'm sending my kids to Canada, I'll go and stand there with them. To, uh, I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's, it's not right. You see? If, and if we don't respect ourselves, people will not respect us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if if a Ghanaian comes to your... You get me? Yeah. If the Ghanaian government respects Ghanaians, it will not sit down and allow VFS to treat Ghanaians like they are, they are, they are trash. Yeah. But oh. I, um, it's just from the basic needs uh -huh. of humans not being basic in this country. A two-bedroom apartment starts from 3,000 cities now. Hmm. A plot of land down starts from around uh, 30,000 USD in this hmm. same Ghana and not even a prime area. So, hmm. yes, the problem starts from us hmm. and our leaders watch as things get worse. All right. This one says, it's not easy living and expecting the best service in Ghana. Mm. I'm a single mother earning 10,000 CDs monthly. Mm. My daughter is two years mm. and I've been shopping schools. The schools that offer quality services, the minimum I have found is $500 a term. Oh How can I pay fees to see a pediatrician is 300 CDs? I live in a two-bedroom apartment with a nanny. Pay rent. 
nanny, fuel. Charlie is hard in Ghana. That's why people migrate to Canada, yeah. etc. Yeah. Free education in these countries. Yep. See, Bernard, my sister who works with Walmart in the US earns more than I do. Yeah. And she doesn't even have a degree. Yeah. I have a master's degree. No, go back to the consumer. message. It's a very this message yeah. is very serious, eh? So Sky, look at it oh. Mm-hmm. Single mother, ten thousand. And no, go back to the message. Ten thousand CDs is higher than the uh-huh. average Ghanaian income earner. Yeah, very good. And yet she wants quality education she can't get. She, she has to pay $500. Says the minimum she's found is $500 a term. Because 10,000 cities a month is just $1,000. Yeah. At the exchange of 12.5, it's probably like $750 yeah. a month. And school fees alone is 500 And if you work at a Walmart, you obviously earn more than that. Sure. You know, and in Ghana, everything is priced in dollars. So if it wasn't for the fact that everything was priced in dollars, 10,000 should have been good enough. But 10,000 is not really that much. Do you get it? So, school fees. A, a good private school, you will pay at least 5,000 CDs. Yes. Mm-hmm. Per, per term. Oh, brother. So, if you have the number of kids I have, <laughs> <laughs> you will do what I'm saying. We understand. I have no apologies. 940, I'm going. You don't go. I don't go. Okay. I don't go, go. Uh, Charlie. This one says, No, but later, if our boss is doing gala, then we, what will we do? do? Uh, you, you, you don't have the problems that <laughs> oh, my <brother. laughs> I, I, was, I was telling yes. you that there is no Ghanaian who doesn't do gala. I'm saying yeah. it's just a different name. I was like, even it's today, it's somebody gave a birthday request. The person is, is in a bank, is a banker, yeah. but it's also the kids. chief creative designer for a fashion company. Yeah. Richard. Everybody's doing more than yeah, one. Yeah. What are you saying? See, you. <laughs> you sitting here. Nathan. You don't want to hang That's French translation. <laughs> <laughs> you. You're a lawyer. Counsel. You're a journalist. Yes. You're a consultant. Yes. He sometimes does rapporteuring for conferences. Uh-huh. Where, yes. Ah. He does. So when you do a serious conference and need somebody who understands... So who when you went to Nigeria... No? See the way he writes English. Oh. Oh, girls they write English, they pay him. Oh, so then you don't. Then you can't laugh at me. I'm me. All I can do is MC oh, moderator. Then, then they left with me. Oh, you you do comedy for free. Oh, 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 you are an influencer. Oh, this you are a travel consultant. Oh, this ah, by you, what are you talking about? Oh, we all do galams. Even DJ Goffred, he does music consultants. Uh-huh. <laughs> Read the message. Stop putting it on me. It's not me. All right, this one says, <laughs> I heard the story this morning and it was sad, but it's always better to go abroad rather than stay in this country that's in a mess. I can tell you that you can't bet your last coin on Ghana in the next decade where the only option we have is a two-party state then at, uh, where both have failed, okay? Mm-hmm. It's tragic, but people are dying here like flies and that's not reported. It's not as deadly as you're seeing out there. Bro, where... In Ghana is scary. Okay, Kelvin, please send. So he's not happy. So he's effectively yeah. saying that, look, it's better out there. You go and take a shot yeah. outside. Yeah. Pauline yeah. Boutre says, I agree we need to build our country. Mm-hmm. But uh, some of you who have lived abroad before need to educate the youth. A friend of mine, bank, I sold his house to travel abroad two years ago. Uh. I advised him against it. He didn't listen. Now, whenever he yeah. calls, it's all complaints and regrets. Nowhere no, cool. cool. If you are comfortable here, what's the point in traveling to go and hustle That's elsewhere? So the weather is cool there. Right. This one says, and you miss Kenke too. <laughs> no, that Kenke, you get some. The well, when I was there, cooked some. when I went there, I used to, I used to buy some half big, half cooked Ghanaian Kenke. Yeah. Then I'll go and boil it. Charlie, yeah. Sky. But the I Kenke, kenke is not the same. I'll yeah. be, half cooked Kenke. Yeah. It doesn't mean taste like a proper cake. Boil same. it, oh, get some shito and stack it. Then I'll do the sign of the cross. <laughs> 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 oh, so we just need to get a few things working on the good This one says, I've been in Ghana for 30 years. There's nothing good to write home about. Let Then let me go abroad now and hustle, bro. Fred says, I'm listening to you this morning from Middlesbrough. Hey. And I'm sad. I wish I were home oh, doing something. Father. I love like running a business. Oh. The things we go through in Obi oh, Man's It's not oh, easy. Oh. Fred. It's it's so the is cold and miserable. Oh, ah. oh Fred. Oh, well Fred. Well. This one says, I was deeply moved by the tragic story of the Ghanaian oh. passing away in Canada. It's mm. disheartening to witness such events, mm. especially when people come to our churches to share their stories of hope after obtaining their visas. Oh, it can lead one to reflect on perceptions of our part of the world as darkness oh. compared to the light of Western and I European you, regions. Yeah. This one says, the narratives presented by pastors at times yeah. exacerbate this feeling of disparity, yeah. making it seem as though those of us residing here are trapped in bondage. Mm-hmm. 
It's a reflection not only of our personal tragedies, but also on the leadership in our communities. Yeah. But uh, you know, while in the UK, we visited a Presbyterian church. Yeah, man. And they were speaking to you. Everything was done in yeah. tree. It felt like home, right? Yeah. But then the testimony time. Testimony time. Yeah, but me bought for a thousand pounds, ten pounds. Me bought for a seal be drew as we dream. This was to say, oh, no, no, no. Everyone is thanking God that somebody came. They are dependent on someone has yes. re relocated from Ghana and has joined them. It's serious. But hey! it's, not, it's not just because they feel like Ghana is bad. It's also because when you are there, you need support. Yeah. So, and once somebody comes, yeah. they also get opportunity. You yeah. know, what, they've created an a land where when you come, you get something get to some do. Provided you work hard. Uh, so, yeah. for me, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, it's sad. Yeah, so it's, it's sad. You see, you see, people go with all kinds of reasons. Like, yeah. The first time I went to the UK mm -hmm. was in 2007. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, if my memory serves me correctly. And that was shortly after we had celebrated our, our 50th anniversary as a country. Mm -hmm. And um, it was to go and uh, cover the president's state visit uh -huh. to, to Kufur. Bakim, yes. Kufur, yeah, that's right. that's, yeah. Yeah, the official visit. Is that visit. a Buckingham today? Oh, yeah. I mean, Clearly. Yeah, 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 or this Buckingham <laughs> Palace. <laughs> yeah, so this is London. Yeah, man. So, mm -hmm. so when I got in there, mm -hmm. something told me that, look, you don't belong here. <laughs> no. I needed to come back here hey, okay. so, so to grow. Uh, okay. Because you got into a space, yeah, man. you saw that things were working in an orderly manner. You had always heard about As compared to Adafi, you know? Yeah, I mean, you asked yourself, look, I mean... <laughs> Are we in the same God's F? <laughs> you spoke to colleague journalists from all parts of the world and you interacted with them. Yeah, that they are not that smarter look, than yeah, you. Yeah, this is where you can come back yeah, and come have education and yeah, all man. that. So, it, it, it depends on why you are going there. Yes, please. And you don't go there and just hope you are going to hustle. Hustle is the same. Hey, hustle, hustle is hustle. No, I mean, sometimes the things that, look, sometimes when I'm going to school, you hold your bag and you are going and you hear the people speaking a car. You turn back <laughs> and you see... It's a brother, man. They go move trolley for, uh, what do you call it, Tesco. You know, that's what you pack, about a thousand of them a day. But it's also work. <laughs> work. But you see, it's in work. the cold, and when they tell you their stories, it's because things are not great here. Imagine we build uh, in this country into the Dubai of the new world. Let me tell right? you. Right? It should be possible for the Ghanaian to feel comfortable at home. That's because, it. look... I went to my cousin during this visit mm -hmm. in 2007. He he was somewhere in, in, in London when I went to visit him. Mm -hmm. Into a mechanic. Mm -hmm. When I got to his shop, look, I was so sad that it was so cold. Mm -hmm. Very, very cold. Whoa. Whoa. And this guy was still trying to slack something with you know, his you know the hand. The worst part of living in the UK, you are in a room where there's no heater. Charlie, yeah. yeah. hey. it's deadly. Your heat is good. It's shaking. Look. Thank God for Sano. So every time I wake up in the morning, say, God, I thank you for the sun. <laughs> hey, my brother. So it's kind of serious. So, so imagine that guy sends money back home. And you are misbehaving. For pe you know, I know 500 people pounds. who yeah, have it's, saved it's, so it's, much it's money. Blood. Mm -hmm. they, they have invested so much yeah. money to take their children to yeah. school, right? Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they spend all their years in school. They put the money into their accounts that, oh, you transfer the money and come to school in the UK. Mm -hmm. These guys are going to blow their money. Mm -hmm. Like they chop the money for the fala. So you see, the point I'm making is that people are going through so much just to have a better life. There are people who have it bordeaux. Like somebody is giving you the opportunity to go and study. Full, full, full. And, and sometimes you go to the school, there are people who are on scholarship. There are people who have come there because someone supported them, but they are not in the classroom. They are not studying. <laughs> they are doing this. Every other day, they are calling their parents, and some of them are big boys and big girls here in this country. But these are not things you can say on radio. Yeah. They, they are just misusing the yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Meanwhile, somebody has the best of A's across all subjects. And just wants an opportunity to get into the system and it. become something else. Mm -hmm. So please, there are people going through so much to get there. When you have the opportunity, make the most of it. Let me read a, a message on the subject you raised. Yeah. Sky, thank you for this conversation. Very good. Yeah. This one says, Bernard, I was at the Canada VFS Abilinkui. There was a nursing mother who has to be in the queue for more than two hours. No. At some point, she was breastfeeding her baby in the queue. Ah. I had to draw the attention of the officials before she was called ah. and attended to. I was so appalled. No priority. From my own experience, 
uh, this was rather frustrating. It's very disappointing. No order and customer service appointment. Now, I just want to repeat this. Now, you see, the 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 embassies have a responsibility to manage the visa process. Yeah. Outsourcing it to VFS can make it more efficient, but it should not complicate the lives of citizens mm -hmm. because ultimately it's the Canadian government that manages the visa process. Yeah. VFS just helps to align documents. Yeah. So they can outsource the process, but they cannot absorb themselves the responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like we've given it to a private company, so whatever they do, no, it's your business. Right. And I'm You're urging fine. the foreign minister, mm -hmm. she's lobbying for a new role. We have, we deserve better. Yeah. We deserve better. You mm -hmm. cannot have people sit in the sun outside queuing like they are going for food rations. So Meanwhile, in the Canadian government is looking for our people that we have yeah. trained. Two, yeah. 200 of our nurses that we train with taxpayers' money mm -hmm. are going to work abroad. We've trained them. You are recruiting them. You are not doing us a favor. Yeah, they've left. You are meeting a skills gap in your own country. Yep. That's why some people even say government should tax them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you take a nurse from SHS, you train her for six years, she goes through the system, she's worked, she's learned all the things. When she's supposed to come and provide critical mm -hmm. care, she goes to work in a care home in another country. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what's even so tragic for me. Child. You know? And then to even let them go through these yeah. crazy processes. Yeah. You know, we, we, we if you don't respect yourself, nobody respects you. That's right. I'm urging foreign minister mm -hmm. to write a strongly worded letter to the Canadian High Commission yeah. And people have sent photos. You can go online. There are so many pictures of this situation. Send your people from the foreign ministry to go to the VFS in Abilinkpe. <clears throat> Is this how we treat Canadians when they come to Ghana? Not at all. Hmm. How do you treat Ghanaians like they are some scum? No, it's, it's wrong. You know? So the foreign minister must take... And the fact that the, the, the other... And this, the VFS works more effectively at the one they do at airport. Mm -hmm. They work effectively at the one they do at Mervyn Peak. So why are they treating the Canadian one like that? Mm -hmm. So the Canadian government must talk about it. Mm -hmm. You get it? It's what they've permitted. It, this should not be done in their name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really bad. But uh, there's a message coming here. It says, bro, please tell Ghanaians to stay home. <laughs> the things people go through if they don't have all the required documents mm -hmm. is very disheartening. It's they sell all their belongings just to realize that it's not worth it. This is Ebenezer. While we're in the UK, he came to, I mean, look for me. He is in uh, Nottingham. Mm -hmm. I was in Saturn at the time. He joined a train, came all the way to just to you. say hello. Yeah, yeah. Was like There's are more comments. So, all right, this one says, the migration issue yeah. is no longer about the underprivileged. I know mm. colleagues who held senior roles Rose. in yeah. banks yeah. and other corporates that have left to go and hustle abroad. Even, be, even big four. Big four. So, okay, yeah. those who work in the big four financing, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they are lucky. If you work in, like, say, PwC, yeah. you can, you yeah. can yeah. pick a job anywhere and live anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's, so that one is it's it's uh, go on. all right and he says bernard they left on a vi visitor's visa and not a work permit some have sold their assets oh, and left the country to restart their lives mm. in mm -hmm. says, more that comments that coming in zero five four nine nine eight six nine nine six guy mm -hmm. somebody sent me a video of the canadian vfs mm. this morning from a mm -hmm. it's not good at all wow he was just driving by but there are plenty mm. and, and you know sometimes when the the papers just fall out of their hands yeah. and they're running after it on the road Charlie, cars are pee, pee. Oh. Charlie, people are sweating Oh, it, Charlie, it, it, it depresses me. Anytime I get there, I just get angry. Let's read more comments. All right, this one says, <clears throat> I'm sad. I'm saddened by the tragic uh, demise of the young man in Canada. If our greedy leaders had made systems and structures work in their country, most able young men won't, won't leave. Living in this country is like living in hell. Hey, have you gone there before? Says, <laughs> only time will tell, as Bob Marley said. For mm -hmm. me, my resolution is to leave this crazy country. Yo. Even though I work in a government, still nothing better. Yo. I see. Hmm. Um, my name is Kwesi from Kumasi. Bernard, my brother, uh, who was teaching in secondary school and later studied uh, to become a chartered accountant, left Ghana to the UK to do a healthcare job. Mm. My heart is bleeding in terms of what's happening to the youth. Mm. This one says, mm. it's the VFS Processing Center for Canadian Visas. You do need an appointment to go but you queue outside to go inside. Once you go inside, there are seats. The problem is that the space is inadequate. Mm. They need to move to a bigger space. Mm. This one says, it's the VFS. However, people go there before the appointment schedule. I believe that's the reason, especially for those coming But can they have a crowd. system in place where when you go, you show your appointment? So, mm -hmm. for example, 
if you have people who have six to seven appointments, yeah. you can have a, a queue where you say, if you don't have a six to seven appointment, don't you come into don't the come, space. Yeah. You get fence the place or something so that only those who have the six appointments, like something. Now you get it? I understand that sometimes people are desperate, but it's always the system you create because I think the US embassy, when you go, you show your ticket. So let's assume you have a 1230, you go, there's a kiosk outside, you show the guy your 1230 and he says, come in. If you don't have a 1230, you don't have to. And the way they do the appointment, you even come there and be standing there plenty. Yeah. <laughs> you have an appointment. Yeah. So, and I'm saying that because they have this skills program, they know that there are a lot of applicants. So they should find the system of doing it. You should it. fine tune it. Yeah, they have to. Hmm. All right, this one says, uh, there are no chairs available for people who have appointments standing outside. Mm. The plastic chairs provided are for rent. You pay four CDs for sitting on any of them. Ah, you pay? For how long? Ah, who? You pay to who? Somebody is doing business oh. there. <laughs> oh, are you serious? That, no, that, that is the thing. Ah, you pay ah. to sit on a chair. The chair, the baby. Look at that. Are you serious? Ga- Ghanaians too, you have something. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you are going to apply for visa. Hmm. And then you have to pay yeah. to sit on a chair to wait outside. Yeah. Otherwise, you sit on the road, right. man. On the hard but shoulders can't, of the road. can't the VFS people provide a place with a shade get a can how, how, how much does it cost to get a canopy and put some chairs there that, 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 that's how it should be done ah black man to an amateur is a yeah, will right, this one says oh, no. um <laughs> at the embassy girl boys line up early at the entrance pretending to be visa applicants only to push for money from real applicants to enter mm-hmm. for visa application. Mm. Now, Nigel says, isn't what Sky is saying the same thing that happens at the U.S. Embassy? No chairs. And you see people standing under trees. But I don't, I don't, know see, if that I don't see that many people in the U.S. Embassy. Mm-hmm. I don't. The U.S. Embassy, at least from what I know, unless I haven't gone there in some time, I see the queue, but it doesn't take long to get in. This, one, this is what I see. I don't know if they've, they've changed it. Okay. You go, you see like a, a queue of maybe 20 meters. Mm. And after a few minutes, they get in. Get inside. Yeah. I don't think it's a, as, as bad as what they are saying there. Mm. This one says, I'm not a fan of traveling to Europe. Every person around wants me to travel. My wife keeps reminding me of people traveling, especially her friends and colleagues. I've always said to them, it's just the exchange rate. There's pressure on me. I'm a teacher and a farmer. Culture. I've won, I won an award uh, during the last Farmer's Day. Looking for funding to do what I want. I.e. I- farming is not easy. Now I'm beginning to see traveling outside, working and bringing the money back to establish a more modern farm and abattoir. A change, Bernard, um, we need a change in Ghana. I just want to be in Ghana and make it here, inshallah. Sometimes my wife thinks I'm not serious. It's not easy. Oh, Charlie. Charlie, somebody sent something that's quite disconcerting. You know? mm-hmm. Talk to him. He says that apparently there's a, 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 a VFS premium center that is a joint venture between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and VFS. At where? Where is that? I'm asking the person, please, where is this? So the person is texting me as we are on here that the problem is that there's a premium passport center, which is a PPP partnership between Foreign Affairs and VFS. So I don't know whether that premium passport center applies to Canada too. Mm, okay. Okay. So what is trying to say that in the Foreign Affairs that I'm calling on to. Oh, they are yeah, they are in a, an unholy, <laughs> unholy alliance, yeah. alliance with the VFS people. Hey! <laughs> All right, this one says, um, the Canadian one is still VFS, but what has caused the crowding over there is that many people go there before the appointment times. Let's say someone is scheduled for a 2 p.m. appointment. He gets there at 9 a.m. I don't know why he decides to stay there the whole day. That's what causes the carnage. It was never like that. This mm-hmm. coupled with the sheer numbers due to the number of applicants has caused this. Okay. James from Kotobadi. Quick, quick information. So the Canadian passport application, mm. you can't get from the premium center. So there's a premium visa center, but it doesn't apply to Canada. Oh, so okay. Canada is just a Okay. So you have to go there. Yeah, to so while well, the foreign affairs and VFS have a premium... Uh, application center. Mm. When I went to um, Airport City for my Switzerland visa, mm. I went to the premium center. I paid a bit more and I went there. And it was very seamless. Yeah, the but the Canada one, I think, is specific a billing pay matter. They don't want to add anything to it. Because when you go to the the center at um, um, Airport City, there are about five countries that you can apply for. And they process all of them there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, I think the Canadian visa, because a lot of these long term visas, and most of it were my skilled migrants. Mm-hmm. The, you know, to apply as a migrant has a more elaborate process. Mm-hmm. All right. So 
but the point is really because that the British, sorry, the, 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 the Foreign Affairs Ministry and VFS already have a relationship. Yeah. So, so which is what makes this even worse. Yeah. Because the Foreign Affairs Ministry already knows VFS. Why should they sit down for VFS to be treating Ghanaians going to Canada like that? They should read the You know, no. Honorable mm-hmm. Minister right. of Foreign Affairs, don't All right, down. this one says, it's very mm-hmm. terrible at the Canadian Visa Application Centre. I was there yesterday to submit my passport for my visa. My appointment time was 8.45. I left the place at 11.45. In all, you have to be there three times. Mm. Biometric time, submission of passport if approved, and passport pickup. Why? Mm. All right, but she says, please, the chairs provided outside the uh, visa place are billing pay. Uh, for rental, I think somebody saw a business opportunity <laughs> in providing <laughs> the chairs. Oh, oh, oh. This one oh, says, oh, I oh, recently oh. went through the Canadian visa application process. The issue has to do with the entire process, which is structured just to create unnecessary congestion. Mm. Why should people queue to collect passports after their passports have been stamped when we could use the postal and courier service? The center also provides services to some of our West African neighbors which do not have the VAC. Mm. And that adds the congestion. All right? Um, <laughs> this one says, then and cool, the jackpot has become necessary. Senior, all the funds... The funds we had saved over the last one to one and a half years are depleting at a faster rate. Cost of building is hi- is high. No joke. Business growth is slowing. Our friends who left earlier after three to five years are putting up their buildings. These are people we know we were better off than before they left. Jakpa is imminent now Charlie. for the youth. Why do they call it Jakpa? Is it a Ghanaian thing? Jakpa move is a Nigerian thing. Why are we always copying one Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah, one Jimmy. Yeah, one Jimmy. One bounce. Yeah. Bernard, um, so 200 nurses and other health workers from uh, Konfonochi Teaching Hospital left Ghana last year. And the chief executive officer of Konfonochi Teaching Hospital, Professor Otria Diamensa, has been requesting government intervention to address the departure of same. Now, he was addressing the exodus, which is negatively impacting mm. healthcare delivery at the hospital, mm-hmm. which serves as a major referral center. CEO raised this concern during a meeting with the finance minister, Mohammed Amin Adam, who visited the facility on Tuesday. We will bring you that insight quickly and we'll continue. But most importantly, it has to do with replacement of staff. Uh, not employment of new staff, but the replacement. Uh, in the past year, we have had over 200 nurses leave Confanoche. Every day, I have had to approve about three or five, three to five applications for either leave of absence or resignations. And mostly nurses, sometimes radiographers, sometimes medical laboratory scientists. We are praying that we get given the opportunity to replace these people who are living so that we can continue with the care that we are supposed to be giving to our patients. Uh, I have some of the most very dedicated cater focus uh, in the country, the nurses, the doctors, the laboratory scientists, and every one of them. It is however true that at one point you may have one person who may do something that may not be right. But the truth is that if you want to do a proper assessment of my nurses, my doctors, my staff generally, I think that they are doing very well, especially given the circumstances under which they are working. These are the things we would want you, Honorable Minister, to pay heed to and help us solve. So, so this is the Rich Sky version of the song that... Um, the Kofi Kinata one. So Kofi, Kofi Kinata's song. is the fancy one. This is the FF version. This is the one. Same song, and same beat. Yes, but Check this one is the, the, the... But this one even came here. This is uh, uh, Adam. 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 Amawo, la fupa, agba de ko, la sima, ba ko ba, da na ja, ba fude, ba fude. We the hustle for a to 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 to, a to to. We the hustle for a to 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 to. We bring back this song. It's a special one for Richard the Last Guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but Bernard, we have yeah, someone on the UK on the line. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> 
He said, when I wake up early morning uh-huh. on my way, uh-huh. only a young They are calling me football. to wait. Yes. People are suffering. I'm trying one or two things yes. just for some money to I show. Will come back. Oh my God. Makui. For the what? For the tutu. Thank you. <laughs> no, drop the line again. One last one. I beg, I beg, I beg. I beg. <laughs> Adam, Adam, myself, and Sky have the same baby. Uh, oh, 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 so, no, so you are spiritual. No, we, are, we are three wise men. Bernard Robert Atiyaku joins us uh, from the UK. Good morning, Robert. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Caleb and uh, Bernard and all of you. Fantastic. Where in the UK are you listening to us from? Um, I'm listening from Sheffield in the South Yorkshire. We are between Manchester, Nottingham and Leeds. Uh, so um, uh, that's where we are. It's called South, York, uh, South Yorkshire. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for the past uh, 13 years. Uh, this is my first time, you know, uh, coming on air with right. you guys. Right. Robert, what's the temperature where you are? What was the, what's the informal? Well, at the moment, uh, at the moment, it's raining. Um, it's raining. It's going to rain all day till one o'clock. Um, at the moment, it's, uh, um, the temperature now is uh, seven degrees. It's not bad, but it's raining. Uh, I, wa- I work in a university, uh, one of the university in uh, in the city. Um, we're doing fire alarm tests, so I think I don't have much time. Uh, we got to test the fire alarm on a particular time, so I was, uh, you know, online waiting. Uh, I got to go in the next two minutes, but I want to contribute. To be honest, um, I've seen, uh, uh, you know, what is going on and heard what is going on. Uh, Ghana at the moment, I would say, <laughs> it's like a sinking ship. Uh, we we have to arise. I think uh, the time has come for the youth to arise because uh, the rate at which people are migrating from our country to this place, somebody might say, "Oh, why are you there? I got married and I didn't want to come to UK. I didn't want to travel, but you know, I had to join my wife. I got three children here." Um, one thing I want to say is not all people who come here are struggling. I think some of us, we, we will be exempted because when I came, I was working with the VNRA before I came. And when I came, the system here was totally different. So I had to go to college, improve myself. I've been on construction site. I've been on all sorts of things. Now I'm working as a maintenance engineer at the University of Sheffield. So it's not the same. This, the story is not the same. Um, so when people come, they go to study the system. Uh, but, you know, it's so sad to hear about what other people are going through. And uh, I think um, because I don't have much time, I'll end here. I think we will have... R- Robert, are you, are you coming back about. anytime soon, though? Are you coming back anytime soon? Well, I was in Ghana last year, uh, but I think um, uh, my children are still young. Even the first one is uh, 12 years, so he's still in secondary school. Uh, I, I need to, you know, build their, their future before come back. I, I wish I have time so we can talk more into details about what I'm doing. That, that's okay. Help people. That's we okay. have to get time to talk about some of these things. That's but, fine. Um, you guys are doing a very good, good job. And I think keep pushing and our leaders have to make something you know, uh, to change what is going on. Thank you, no, Robert. No. Um, next time we're in the UK, we will link up. Yeah, we'll link up. Let, let's, yeah, I'm on Tim Fada movement. You know, so he said something really important, yeah. which is the the fire drills they do. Yes. Oh, my Dale. word. You know, it's a great thing. It prepares you for the day that something bad will happen, mm-hmm. that you'll, you'll be required to leave your building in. And a certificate of agency, mm. I should put it that way. It is something we don't do often here. We don't do at all. Oh, okay. Sky, 
it's one difference between serious societies and unserious ones. When you're in the UK, even if you are sleeping at 2 a.m., uh, and you don't come out of your room, they will find you. They'll find you. You see, here we in Ghana, every week we report fire at Kayetia, fire at Makola. We've allowed chaos to worsen our lives. We all, it's also because we also don't want to be properly governed. We also need to look at ourselves. Because when I was in the UK, the fire drill, we, we were having a lecture. There was a guest lecturer Charlie. from India. <laughs> we all came out, including the vice chancellor. Mm-hmm. Wow. And they'll go and sit in the corner, they'll smoke. <laughs> and go back inside. You get me? There's a certain discipline and institutions that work. Mm-hmm. You get it? The, you, you will be fine. It's been programmed. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows. Mm-hmm. But here, those who can pay will opt out. Those who are connected to politicians will opt out. Pastors will call. Chiefs will call. You see the society we create. Everybody wants to opt out for only the poor to, to, to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. Everybody will break the law mm-hmm. and they all call somebody to call somebody to call somebody. A society cannot advance like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have to also look at ourselves when it comes to things like this. Bernard, Kofi Capito is the chief executive for Consumer Protection Agency. Mm-hmm. He joins us on the phone lines. Good morning, Kofi. Welcome to the City Breakfast Show. Hey, the second trouble person in Ghana, apart from me. I can be too best at you. Good morning to you and and, uh, and Della and the uh, people uh, listening to us. Bernard, I don't know if you can remember the number of times I've held a press conference in regards to yeah. uh, Ghanaians being disrespected mm. in our own countries. Mm. But we have a foreign minister in a ministry. And it's not yet this particular time. Mm-hmm. I remember I've been fighting this since Hackman. Mm-hmm. Hackman mm-hmm. was a foreign minister. Mm-hmm. Hackman managed to do something small by also threatening mm-hmm. all the foreign countries in Canada. They are our guests. And they should respect us as Ghanaians. Mumini has come. Uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, 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 a lot of people are coming, including my own good friend, Shelly Ayokobochi. Now, let me give you a little history. Ghana, we were so special that when I was growing up, I didn't need a visa to go to UK or Canada. Or you, you take your passport, you board a plane, you get to the airport, they give you visa upon arrival, as we are now doing for people to come into our country. The question is, what happened? Foreign ministers who don't even understand that the word diplomacy, and that is what I'm going to make my uh, submission on. Diplomacy is reciprocal. The way you treat me is how I treat you. So there's no way that the, um, the, the foreign ministry, including the government of Ghana, should allow any country who is the guest in our land to disrespect us morally, culturally, and legally. But these foreign dignitaries, including the ministers themselves, I can tell you that some of the ministers, if it wasn't the fact that they were ministers, probably cannot even go on their own to go and collect a visa. But they sit through the diplomatic corps, they would then send drivers to go and collect their visas for them. So they don't care about you and I. Bernard, why have this uh, so-called processing centers become so disrespectful? Because they also act as if they are an embassy. They think they are covered by the diplomatic immunities that the various embassies has. I've had issues that, uh, is it uh, Melvin Pick? Where the street people, I want there, I insist that I want to see that white man who is in my country that has employed him for him to come and disrespect me. When the white man came, I said, you know something, this nonsense has to stop. Then you go to Melvin Pick, people don't even have any place to sit. And they've given you an appointment to come and pick your passport. I'm talking about even just to go and pick the passport, not just to go and present. People sit on the floor, lean against the wall, 
why are we treating ourselves like this? These people, when they go to our embassies in, 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 in their country, we don't treat them that. Kofi, so I've heard people say that the Ghana embassies abroad are no better. In fact, some people say that even when Ghanaians themselves go to our embassies in the UK and things, Charlie, there's nothing to accommodate people apart from the few seats outside. I know it's even cool. You're talking about the Ghanaian, and I agree because I have experienced it at the Washington mm. embassy myself. Guess what? And I had to call Ajia, is it Alima? Who's the, who's the ambassador? I think it's Aji Alima, right? Yes, that's Aji Alima, yes. US, I'm yes. US. When I told them, Madam, you we should stop this nonsense. <laughs> Ghana Embassy, and as it pertains to every foreign national in any country apart from their own country, your safe heaven or your safe haven is to run into your embassy, including even foreigners who are in your country who are being pursued if you run into any embassy, you are supposed to be protected. Is it uh, that the guy who leaked with, right? Julian Assange. Stuck, Julian Assange, yes. yes. Hassan. He Assange. was stuck in an embassy in London for how many years? Yeah. And this, like I said, our, our diplomats, our foreign people, yeah, but most of them... Kofi, Kofi, I'm not arguing with you. What I'm saying is that if the Ghana embassy doesn't treat its own citizens good. How do you expect foreigners to treat your citizens better? Because if you go to US or wherever, I'm told that the treatment for Ghanaians by our own embassies is really bad. So why I on earth would you expect the same foreign minister to turn around and say, treat our citizens better? If they are not treating their own citizens better. Bernard, and the sad thing is, do you know they treat those foreigners at our embassies better than us? Which is a fact. So I expect the Ghanaian too to be treated better here yeah. than the foreign. By, by the way, by the way, let me tell you something. I was with some Americans this week, and they said to me that the the process of applying for a Ghana visa online was horrendous. In fact, they spent thirty minutes as if I was the government. They complained so much, although they admitted that the Ghana embassy officials are really nice people, and they treated them well physically. They really complain about the, the the dysfunctional visa application process into Ghana and the excessive amounts they were charged to get into Ghana. And these guys were coming to Ghana, Benin, and Togo. And they said Benin and Togo was very simple and much cheaper. So I'm just letting you know that mm. maybe from the outside as well, we are not that great. We are not justifying the bad treatment. If you are going on reciprocity, you need to be sure of the state of your own visa application process into Ghana before you to start telling people to do something, because you don't know how your embassy is treating those guys as far as their visa application is concerned. Can I, can I tell you that that is, that is a force by those Americans? And they don't even know what the hell they are talking about. Ask them, when, when they process visa in, in Washington, D.C., or they process it online, how long does it take? And how much are they charged? No, they told me. They, 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 they said they paid oh, no, in excess of... No, you're asking me a question. I, I, I've been dealing with this okay. for a long time, and I'm happy you are discussing this. Please hear me. Okay. Anybody that tells you that is a freaking liar. At the moment, do you know how many countries can come into Ghana without a visa? Go and check the list. They get the score visa upon arrival. Dubai does it for us. When you are going to Dubai, you don't need a visa. All you need is a ticket, and then they will give you a visa upon arrival. Yeah, my, Kofi, my, Kofi, my, I get that though. I'm trying to make a point. Just listen to me for two minutes and you respond. I'm saying that the, we are not happy with the way Ghanaians are treated. But I'm saying that the basis for the complaint is reciprocity. And I'm asking you if you are sure that if the countries that we are referring to, US, Canada, and UK, these are the three top countries of application. If you go, if an American applying to Ghana or a Canadian applying to Ghana or a British applying to Ghana, are you sure that the process that we are we take them through, whether it's online or physical, that process is good enough for us to claim that what they do to our people is bad? Because I am telling you from only Monday, I met 13 Americans and they spent 30 minutes complaining to me as if I was the government of Ghana. The, the fee, the charge, the online service doesn't work. They said they were uploading too many documents and they were comparing Ghana to Togo and Benin and said, Benin and Togo are heaven compared to Ghana. So I'm just saying, maybe our inquiry should start from the Ghanaian foreign ministry and say, foreign affairs, let's test your own system because we cannot go reciprocity if we ourselves are not spot on.
So maybe the foreign affairs ministry is failing us on both ends. They are having, they are giving people a bad experience coming in, and our people are also getting a bad experience going out. Bernard, like I, I repeat myself, I wish I could meet those gentlemen and argue with them word for word, example for example. I'll ask them how much is is the visa fee for an American to come to Ghana? Number one, what is the process of them applying online compared to what you and I go through? Here in Ghana. Okay, when somebody's making, maybe they are comparing it to Benin and Togo. It's possible my, maybe the process might be a little easier in Benin and Togo. But what I want them to understand is when I am also going through here and what they are coming into Ghana, this is worse than mine in terms of every experience. That is what, that is, that is the argument here. And I challenge any foreign. Look, drive by the various embassies in Ghana. Drive by various embassies in Ghana. Ghanaians are put on the sun. When it's raining, you are put outside. I don't even, I'm not even talking about people who just go and hang around. People who have appointments. People who are asked to come. Have you seen the land size of the British, the Canadian, and the American embassy in Ghana? Have you seen the land size? So how come they cannot create a room for accommodation? You remember they used to have a room for you to go and sit at the American embassy, even the new one, next to the vice president's house. Before they were at Osu, next to uh, that, uh, what's it called? Uh, 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 behind MTN, MTN's office. I'm talking about back in the 70s, when I started applying for American embassy. It was even much easier. So when you bring online application, that is should make the take the uh, interference of the human face. Okay, look now, now do you know what they have? Any app, every application is different from everybody's. The refusal letter that they give you is a generic refusal letter. It's not specific to your application, and it is wrong. Because guess what? Maybe I went there and the reason why I was refused was because I said I am married and they want to see that I truly I am married so I should come with a, a marriage certificate. Why would they give me the same refusal letter as you that they think what you are saying is a lie? Bernard, are you hearing me? I, I get that, but you know, Kofi, I think those are fair points. So, but the question I'm asking is, have you tried to engage the embassies directly as the consumer protection agency or is your advocacy yes. focused more on our mission as no, the foreign affairs? See, you see, you cannot, you cannot do that. <clears throat> you need to go through the foreign embassy mm -hmm. for the foreign embassy, for, 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 for the foreign affairs to engage them because apparently they have the, what's it called, the head of diplomatic corps in Ghana. Mm -hmm. All the diplomats. Hmm. Okay, which they gather. I have sent letters. Mm -hmm. I've had response from the various, from the foreign minister that makes me sick as a Ghanaian. Look, I had an, uh, a one on one conversation with one of the, one of the ambas ambassadors. Mm -hmm. That guy, that person was so useless. Oh, Kofi. I think it should be. What, we are on public I mean, radio. I know, we are on public radio. Let, let's be minded of our language. I, 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 you, listen, I don't think it's appropriate to say that you, okay, a person fine. was useless. If I mean, Ghanaian, it's, it's not right. Listen, let me, Bernard, I, I hear you. Mm -hmm. But if a Ghanaian tells me a Ghanaian mm -hmm. in my country that I'm complaining about unfair treatment of a white person or mm -hmm. uh, an Indian or anybody in my country, and the person tells me that, why am I worrying them? Don't I know that we need them more than they need us? Mm. Wow. This and this was a Ghanaian telling you this. A Ghanaian. Could you, could you, like, of, that's terrible. What, what about the role of the Ghanaian VFS workers? Because some of this bad treatment is not, it's also the Ghanaians, right? I just told you that mm -hmm. these VSA workers are behaving as if that office is also a, a, a foreign embassy. They are not. They are just like an office like me coming to CTFM. But the embassies and the workers somehow feel that they are a, a copy of the embassy of site. That is what is happening. Moving pace. The people there are not British diplomats. Any place that you go, 
they are not diplomats. So they are not covered with diplomatic immunity. Do you do you understand what I'm saying? I get it. What are our options? Can we do? No, that, that, can we do? I'm asking, Coach Kofi, wait, can we do protests? You know, when you when you are in the US or UK, one of the places you see a lot of protesters is at the embassies. <laughs> I mean, when you go to London, no. almost every day you I see know. people with protests. Can, can you Everything. can you escalate this to say, let's do a protest against some of these embassies and see whether people will turn up with placards to say we deserve better Bernard, kind of thing? Bernard, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Give me your platform. Okay, let me urge Ghanaians, like the person who called you from England. Okay, anybody who, people who have even had the opportunity to travel, if they have a chance, they will come back and join. So let's use your platform. Let's engage Ghanaians. Let's tell them that maybe the Consumer Protection Agency, led by COVID Capital, says we are going to do a protest. I send letters to various ambassadors, various ministers, foreign ministers in Ghana, sometimes even acknowledge and, and responding, you have to go there three, four times. I that's my point. It is, it is very, very, very sad that these people that we, we Ghanaians, mm -hmm. pay them. Look, let me ask you a question. We were in this country. Ghanaians were complaining about the bad aircraft that British Airways yeah. was bringing to Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Even the president of Ghana yeah. intervened and yeah. said that, do you know how long it took British Airways to change their plane? Okay. Because if this was Nigeria, Nigeria would ban British Airways. Kofi, Kofi, I agree with you and I, I like what you do and I agree with you that we should use that. Look, that's why I put you on air. Let me know what else you want to do because I Man, believe I that Ghanaians have been too docile and too complicit in the way they are treated. And I like your spirit. So I'm there for you, Kofi. Can I tell you what? Give me your I'm last answer. I, I, I have to wrap up now. Okay, okay, okay. But, but, but just, just give me a minute. I'm going to write a letter to the police because supposedly, Ghana, you need to write a letter to the police to let them know that you are going to do it. Of course, process. due process. Oh, yeah. due process. So let, let me write a letter to them. Mm. I give them a date. If they respond that, yes, we can do that, um, whatever we want to do on that day, I will come back to you and we'll start from there. Kofi Kapito, always good talking I, to you. Uh, he's been, Charlie, Kale, he's been applying for visas in the 70s. So. Yeah. So, you know, Kapito, he, he, you, know, Kapito you know, from there, yeah. Kapito came to the city. And some said Kapito was his senior. I said, <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, the guy, you know, he's more boy. Yeah. So, so like, just some quick Ka observation. Kapito is a big boy. Yeah, so, Consumer Protection Agency talking about this very serious issue. We thank him for what he's doing. We will definitely see what we can do to support. Yeah, right. so some, some comments that he makes and uh, someone is giving us some, uh, some quick pointers. Okay. That that's okay, so in the 70s, the U.S. Embassy was not in uh, Osu, oh, was it? but was located inside what is now the Ministry of Women and Children Affairs. That's mm -hmm. the information that is uh, coming in. Um, you, and so, I, you and I were not there. I, <laughs> <laughs> they, actually, <laughs> they actually moved later to um, uh, Osu no, in the no. 80s. And then also, um, the, the point about visa on arrival um, yeah. the information coming in is that apparently that used to be the case until Ghana for some reason decided yeah. to join a boycott mm -hmm. of the Commonwealth Games or some game like that uh, in the UK and the British uh, people responded diplomatically by wiping out um, um, you know visa on arrival it that may well have been part of a bigger capital is one of the points Kofi is. Kapito, it grew. Let me read one from a lady you and I know. She mm -hmm. says, Bernard, I had to go to get a visa for my daughter, Mevin Pick. Mm -hmm. We had to queue in the corridor for hours. She ended up sleeping on the floor. Mm -hmm. They refused for me to see the manager in charge. Ghanaians protecting foreign people who maltreat us. When I was complaining, Ghanaians were looking at me as if I was crazy. We get what we deserve. I think this... Are, so there are two additional points what we've mm -hmm. said. The point I was making to Kofi about the Ghanaian visa process, which is also yeah. not that great, yeah. Yeah. and the treatment of Ghanaians in foreign missions, which is not the best as well. And then the issue of, um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's one issue. Then the, the way Ghanaian people who work in these VFS treat our treat people, people, all right? If you treat your own people like crap, foreigners will do the same, mm -hmm. all right? Which is funny because foreigners tell me Ghanaians are so friendly. And I say, Ghanaians, we are hypocrites. You are so friendly to foreign people yeah. and you treat and your own people so bad. It's, 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 it's a psychological disorder that most people who I meet from outside say, you guys are so friendly and so on. I said, really? Mm. Have you seen Ghanaians talking to other Ghanaians? Give a security man power. He will talk to you as if you are crap. 
Then he says, oh, I didn't know it was you. Do you need to know it was me before you talk to me like this? Mm. All right? So we also need to incorporate in Ghanaians the idea of treat people better. Yeah. All right? Because they look at us. They look at the way we treat people and say, are these people don't respect their own citizens? Why should we respect them? All right? Yeah. This is the point. There's a point from Yao in London, California. Yao yeah, oh, is saying um, the, the system here one. in the UK is different from what is in Ghana. If you understand the system very well, you don't suffer like what others are saying. I've been here in London for just two months and I can say it is far better here than it is in Ghana. Just imagine a normal job like cleaning hmm. and you're being paid 11.95 pounds per ah, hour and you do the normal 40, 40 or 48 hours a week that's like 500 pounds. just do the math for a week and multiply so see, it by four months see 12 for 48 about 480 pounds a week yeah multiply uh, that by four so that's about two thousand close to two thousand pounds a month hmm. two thousand the pound is how much <laughs> She, I think it's around like, 16 or 15 now. So no, that's why if you can live frugally. Pound? Pound, pound, is, pound is more yeah, than pound is so I'm thinking dollar, sorry. Yeah. Pascal, yeah. the problem though is that it depends on where you live. So if, you, if you're living in <laughs> Birmingham or some other part, which is not, rent is not that expensive. Yeah. If you're or, or the guy who called from Newcastle. But if you're living in London. Oh yeah, London bro, is tough. And trans, <laughs> let me tell you, average train in the UK is higher than in most of Europe. Yeah. If you're not a student, yeah. traveling by... Yeah. So you need to factor... I'm not saying don't do this. If you can live on... Eight pounds an hour and save the rest. Good for you. Yeah, depending on the zones you are in. Yeah. The card. So the, the, the truth is that everywhere you go, you have to work hard. The other question we need to ask mm -hmm. ourselves is that do people work as hard here as they work there? This guy, here is a guy who's getting 12 pounds an hour. He accounts for the whole 12 hours. Yeah, go. Is Somebody, go somebody's working here yeah. in Ghana. Yes. He doesn't even do 12 hours an hour because we don't even calculate the time. He spends half of the time on Facebook, half of the time going to eat in the kitchen talking. Six hours. Do you understand? So we also know if we have the, the employment system doesn't even get as much from people. It's not that the people are lazy. You. Mm. Like if you mm. say you are working for mm. a company doing cleaning in the UK, yeah. you are actually doing the work. Yes. Here, yeah. for all the 12 hours. There's, just, we, there's, there's no system it's that it's even dream. ensures. I have yeah. people who work in government, not like high level government. Some of them are doing other jobs. They come Friday, they don't come to work. They say, oh, they are going for a funeral. You get it? How can you be effective and be productive? But if you are doing a cleaning job in the UK, you can't even spend 30 minutes doing misbehaving because they will account for your time. Mm. Bernard, we have Kojo Wilmot. He's a national officer of the IOM Canada Visa Application mm. Center mm. on the phone line. So let, 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 let me leave you and Kojo. Kojo Wilmot, good morning. Hi, good morning. Okay. Is this the Kojo, is this a Kojo Wilmot I know or a different one? This is the Kojo Wilmot you know. <laughs> I hope you've been following the program. There's been a lot of consternation about the VFS Center at Abilenke and the demeaning conditions under which Ghanaians have to wait to get a visa. Has this come to your attention? And what else can you tell us about what people are reporting this morning? All right. Um, thank you. So when I did the Kojo, you know, yes, I work for the International Organization for Migration, and we run the Canadian Visa Application Center. Let me be very emphatic here. It's the Canadian Visa Application Center at Um Yes, unfortunately, I didn't listen in um, early, but my attention was drawn to the fact that you had received a lot of complaints, and these complaints some have come to our attention and we keep improving our service delivery the way we support uh, uh, visa applicants. Um, the problem that um, I had, um, and you can add up if I miss something, primarily has to do with the people hanging around the visa application center and that a lot of them have to wait under trees and all these things. Is that correct, Bernard? It's even worse. So number one, there, there are too many people who come to the place. Mm. The seats that people sit on, sometimes they have to pay four CDs for it. I, nursing mothers are sitting under the sun. There's no shade. There doesn't appear to be... There's too, the, the waiting times are too long. So you have an appointment for maybe 8 o'clock, and you have to wait till sometimes nine to get in. And a whole myriad, like sometimes you have to wait for four hours to get your passport back. So it's a, it's a litany of customer service failures, which I believe if you do regular reviews, should not come to you as a surprise. 
that I shouldn't be the one telling you. You should even know what I'm saying because if if you just go there this morning, you will notice that the number of people standing there is even a security threat near a traffic light, right? And the way they stand there, the way the, the slowness of the queue, it is not even something I should be saying. You should know this already. Cross. Okay. Um, thank you, Bernard. Definitely, Bernard, um, it's come to our attention. And I don't know, first and foremost, um, we used to be at Jolu. We had to relocate to a much more spacious area just because of these problems that you've highlighted. Let me just explain quickly the processes involved. So the people you see there, some are coming for their biometrics. And the biometrics is by an appointment system. So basically you go online and get the appointment. And then once you secure the appointment, at that designated day and time, you will be granted access for your biometrics to be undertaken. The other category of uh, clientele that we support are those who are coming for their passport. And so with a passport, you don't need any um, to book any booking to visit the visa application, Canadian Visa Application Center. It's just a walk-in and you pick your passport. Now, what has come to our attention is that on numerous occasions, the person who actually did the booking and has secured a date and time will now come with an entourage. When they come, they all want to enter the visa application center, the Canadian visa, visa application center. And this, in numerous circumstances, results in the overcrowding you see because the security officer will only grant entry to the person who has been given the appointment to come for the biometric. And so they will decide to hang around the uh, Canadian Visa Application Center area in anticipation that they are waiting for their, uh, the person they came with to go and do the submission. Secondly, there are people who get appointment time and then um, decide to show up early. And so once your time is not up, we would be forced that you wait till your appointment is up, the time that has been allocated to you is up before you'll be granted entry for the necessary processes to take place. And on numerous occasions, we conscientize our clientele that, please, there's no need for you coming to the visa application center with a pastor, a reverend minister, to help you submit your application or undertake the biometric. Because at the end of the day, we <laughs> <laughs> the collection, and we have no say in the decision that is made. We will hand over to the um, Canadian High Commission for the necessary things to be done. And then when you come, when the, the results are ready, I think they send you a message and you come for it. There are numerous occasions, even when someone has the passport. Wait, Mr. Wilmot, on that point, can you not make it simple? So you show up with your invitation or your appointment so that only the person with the appointment enters. But the way your place is, it's even an open place. I'm thinking that for security reasons and just for queue management, you can have a security man who will say, you come in, you queue, you show your, you show your appointment and you enter a space. But the way it's done, you know, it's like a market. So, you, and it's, it's I, I'm not absolving the people for bringing other people, but I feel like you are in charge of that space. So you cannot simply say people just come a lot, so you can't do anything about it. No, Bernard, I explained to you that we had to even relocate because we wanted, we want to really manage the situation to ensure that we do not see them. That is why I explained we had to even move from the former Jowlu place to the current Abelimpe place, just to make sure we expand the uh, processing system to avoid this delay. The other thing that we also need to bring to the fore is that, look, it's the same stuff. We've expanded. We've expanded tremendously. If you came to the Visa Application Center about a year ago or two years ago, and now if you compare, things have been expanded so much. 
But you see, once the application keeps increasing, yes, we're always trying to bring innovative ways to yeah, but, but Mr. Wilmot, you are aware that there is a Canadian skills program. The Canadians themselves are vigorously looking for people. So you need to know that the demand for Canadian visas has gone up. Not necessarily generically, but because of the programs that are being run. So you cannot be surprised at the increased numbers. Because once you start these programs, more people will apply. You need to invest. You get the, you get the point. Okay. Uh, we, we are not overwhelmed by the numbers. Let me explain here. What we have is that there is a process in place where you need to secure an appointment. The appointment time and day is indicated clearly on your slip that at the so so and so day and time show up at the visa application center. Now, you, the person with the appointment, is the only person who will be granted entry. There is no point in you bringing an entourage with you because they cannot enter the visa application, the Canadian visa application center. Secondly, the, those coming to receive their passport, yes, once you get the notification that the decision has been made, there's no point in you also coming with an entourage to support you to come and collect your passport. The only thing you do, show to the security personnel that, yes, my decision has been made and it is me, because definitely the security officer we want to really confirm it is you. It is me going for, and so this should not result in these cases that we are seeing. But if people keep coming in, trooping with family members, with an entourage, with a lot of people, this is what is always mm. resulting in these cases. All right, could you, I, one, could you So you, you, you have so far not even said you are sorry for this this thing. Are you trying to say that? This is not the VFS's fault at all. It's the people's own fault. Is that what I should take from what you are telling me? It's not that we are not sorry. It's the situation is that we treat everyone with dignity and respect. We treat everyone with utmost care. But, but if you are sorry, if you are sorry, you can say it. You haven't said no, it. No, no, of course, nobody. It's, it's a problem for me when I am going to the visa application center. And I see a lot of people sitting under trees, queuing. It's, it's always a worry for me. So no, no. Being a, it's, it's a worry for all of us. So that's not the problem. I'm yes. saying that as the people in charge of the process, are you, are you, you, you've done an interview for seven minutes. You haven't, you haven't apologized. So the fact that it's a problem for you, I don't even know it's a problem for you because you, you are just explaining that it's the people's own fault. They come with pastors and things and therefore you know, you give them an appointment. So if they choose to come with other people, it's not your problem. I don't see a queue, I don't see a queue management system in place. I don't see canopies. I don't see chairs. And yet you're telling me once they don't enter the premises, it's like this, they are not your responsibility. They are within the precincts of the place. So it's their own fault. Is that what I should take from what you have said? Not at all, Bernard. Not at all. That is their own fault. What, um, yes, definitely, we are very sorry to be seeing this issue. And we, on no uncertain terms, um, are happy seeing these things. But in as much as we are always striving to improve our system, striving to ensure that we give an efficient service delivery system to our clientele. We also always, when the opportunity presents itself, conscientize our clientele that there's no point in you coming with a lot of people for these things, for um, passport application or to undertake the biometric registration system. And so, we, we are not going to leave ourselves up. And I keep emphasizing that we always try to improve the system. The system some few months ago is not the same system we're implementing now. And we'll keep improving the system. Okay. That's all I have to say, Bernard. All right. Thank you, uh, Kojo Wilmot, for talking to us. He's the National Officer of the IOM Canada Visa Application Centre. There is more coming up shortly. Stay with us.